Welcome back to channel 37. We have something really special for you today. We are going to rebuild the first DIY kit we ever built. It's the New Tone by Plankton Electronics. It might be hard to tell with the suit, but I used to be a dark electro and industrial DJ back in the day, and distortion features heavily in those genres. Mangling sound beyond recognition is still one of my greatest joys when playing with a modular. So with that in mind, we have been looking for the perfect distortion unit. And after months of research, the Plankton Electronics New Tone quickly rose to the top of that list. It too looks deceptively respectable, but we found it to be capable of some of the most satisfying saturation and freaky feedback of any distortion module out there. The unit is easy to control and full of sweet spots, making it extremely fun to play with. Although this is available as a pre-built module, we decided to take our chances and try the DIY version. This has been an incredible experience because after a year of lockdown and going through every ridiculous hobby possible, this has been something that we could really sink our teeth into and be part of a greater community and explore some like really, really juicy distortion with, honestly. This module was funded by a Kickstarter campaign in 2019. It's part of a family of devices centered around the SPICE modular saturation unit, which to me, feels like a somewhat more sophisticated version of the famous filter bank. Specific functions of the SPICE are broken out into three distinct Eurorack modules. There's the Newtone, which is a warm tube saturation unit and VCA capable of internal feedback loops. And there's also the SPICE VCF, which is a multi-mode filter, and NVF, which is an envelope follower. Plankton continues to release these modules in small batches, either as assembled units or DIY kits. This DIY kit is really exceptional. The build guide is straightforward with pictures to carry along for each step, making it crystal clear for any beginner. We really recommend this for someone who has zero experience starting from scratch. It was so easy, in fact, that we were able to accomplish it with a five euro soldering iron and have really good results. At that point, we'd already ordered a better soldering iron, but we just couldn't wait to get started on this kit. And this was all we had lying around. So if we've already got a new tone, you might be wondering, why are we building a second one? Well, we really enjoyed the build experience, and we want to share the start of our Euro Iraq journey with you. So we reached out to Alex from Plankton, and he offered to send us a, another DIY kit for free, with the condition that we would give him a fair and honest review of our experience and the module as it is. Another stipulation that he mentioned is that we emphasize that the heart of the new tone is the Korg new tube. It's a micronized version of a dual triode tube amplification circuit. It's extremely energy efficient, requiring less than 2% of the power of a traditional tube, so you won't max out the power supply on your Eurorack. And where normal tubes last about 5,000 hours, this one lasts for up to 30,000 hours. So it's a really great circuit to get that tube saturation sound at a fraction of the cost and energy consumption. So here's the package they sent us, and I don't know about you, but I'm really excited to uh, see what's in the box. Let's do it. Hmm, <laughs> very nice. Lots of uh, easy through hole soldering, my favorites. And this is the beautiful front panel, which shows the glow of the tube, actually. Notice this really nice design on the PCB and the matte black solder screen. Really nice details. And these are some of the parts. Note that what's really nice about this is that the parts are not individually packaged and they're actually put in paper recyclable bags, which is much better than the individual plastic wrapping of so many electronic parts. We're into uh, saving the environment one module at a time. And here's the heart of the module, the Korg new tube. So one thing that's really cool about this already is that everything is wrapped in paper bags. And the original unit that we bought also included a note about the dangers of plastic pollution, which we really appreciated because I do some research on ocean plastic and know how big of a problem this is. So we really appreciate Plankton Electronics for drawing attention to that. We're very excited to get started on this. This time we're going to take you guys up to the attic because we've decided to make the transition from working on the dining room table to working in a space where we don't eat. We really value the environment, um, but we also care about our health just as much. So um, we're excited to work in this new space. 
Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Before we get started, we like to make sure that we have all of our components organized and make sure that everything is there and accounted for. Go to the Plankton Electronics website and look up the Bill of Materials and the Build Guide. There, you'll find a detailed visual representation of all the components as well as a visual representation of the build step by step. We're going to start with the trimmers and capacitors. I've got two 10K trimmers, 22U capacitors, 10UF capacitors, 1U capacitor, 330N capacitor, 100N capacitors, 100PF capacitors. Next, we have the diodes to potentiometers. 1N4148 diodes, 1N4001 diodes, LM13700 IC, male and female pin headers, a power header, the new tube, and the plastic and metal potentiometers. Next up are the jacks and resistors. It's easiest to identify the resistors by number, but if there's equal numbers, use a multimeter to tell them apart. 100K, 10K, 150R, 1K, 22K, 330K, 33K, 470R, and 47K. Finally, we have the remaining miscellaneous components. These are two TL074 op amps, two 2N3906 transistors, a voltage regulator, one 3mm LED, a jumper, and three pin header for the jumper, knobs, some M3 hardware, IC sockets for all ICs, and bolts for the jacks and pots. Now let's tidy up and get to building. First, we clean the PCB with isopropyl alcohol. Then we place two 47K resistors. I'm using tweezers to bend the legs. Then we place two 150R resistors, followed by one 10K resistor, two 1K resistors, six 100K resistors, two 33K resistors, and four 330K resistors. Then we solder them all into place. I'm working from the top here so that I don't have to bend the legs and can allow for more precision. When I snip the legs, I hold them in place with a finger so they don't jump up. And I clean up my work from below. I'm cleaning the board because after placing the potentiometers, I won't have another chance. Now place all the control hardware, starting with the 3.5 millimeter connectors, the metal potentiometers and the plastic potentiometers then place the front panel to make sure everything fits and add a couple of nuts to fix it to the board 
then solder everything into place. The large pins on the side of the potentiometer are the ground plugs. Make sure to fill them with solder completely. Next, take the panel off and add the three pin header that goes on the bottom of the board. Now we'll continue with board two. First, we'll clean the board. Now we'll be adding the diodes. Make sure to check the polarity and the resistors. Replacing both 1N4814 diodes. Then both 1N4001 diodes. Next, we're placing four 100K resistors and soldering everything into place. Work fast on the diode so as not to overheat them as they are temperature sensitive. Next, we're soldering two of the 10K resistors. Now, four of the 33K resistors. Four of the 470R resistors. Two 22K resistors. and solder them all into place. Now we're adding the 100N capacitors. Now the 100P capacitors. And soldering them all into place. Now we're adding the two trimmers and IC sockets. Use the front panel to hold them in place while you flip the board, then solder them in place. Check to make sure they're flush with the board. Now we place the transistors. And the voltage regulator. You may have to bend the legs to ensure they fit. Next, place the 1U film capacitors and the 330M film capacitor. Then, the two 10U electrolytic capacitors. Make sure to check the clarity and the 22U electrolytic capacitors. Next, place the power header and solder into place. Now we're going to connect the two boards. Place the screw and spacer on the board one. Place the male and female headers on the bottom side of both boards. Solder both boards at the same time, starting with the corner pins of each header. 
can take them apart again. Now get a hot glue gun, let it warm up, then add some glue to elevate the new tube and keep it in place. Place the new tube quickly while the glue is still hot. I'm using a piece of foam to keep it in place while I solder. Again, work quickly because the part is temperature sensitive. Bend the LED legs at approximately 11 millimeters from the body to ensure it just touches the new tube. Again, I'm using the foam to keep it in place while I solder. Make sure you check the polarity of the LED. Place the jumper on the top two pins of the three pin header if you'd like the new tube to be illuminated. Give it one more bath with an antiseptic brush and isopropyl alcohol to remove flux residue. Use a microfiber towel to mop up the residue. Now it's time for final assembly. We used a spare M3 rack screw on the spacer as the kit only included a bolt. This might have been a mistake. Turn the metal potentiometers counterclockwise and place the plastic knobs. Then place all ICs on the bottom. Flatten the legs on the table if necessary. Congratulations on your finished module. square on top. A little bit of distortion. You've already heard some sound demos of the new tone during the build video, but let me show you how to use it. All the red cables are control voltage and the blue cables are audio. Right now I'm using a single triode of the new tone as a voltage controlled amplifier. If you want to use the new tone as a voltage controlled amplifier, patch the raw signal from your oscillator into the first triode input and patch the output to a mixer. Then insert control voltage from an envelope into the triode level and open up the CV amount. If I open up the bias, the signal will always be coming through. And if I close it all the way until it's silent, then triggering my envelope is gonna open up the amplifier like that. Of course, it's also possible to have a low level of signal bleeding through and add emphasis using our envelope. By increasing the triode bias, we can even get to overdrive levels. This is the clean signal, and if we increase further, it will start to distort. For this second patch, we're using the two triodes as parallel distortions. On triode one, I have a pattern for my mini brute. And on triode two, I have the raw saw oscillator of the mini brute. Now, it's just audio in and audio out, and I can push each of these channels respectively into distortion. Let's hear it. That's distorting nicely. And now let's add a little bit of the second channel for emphasis. Very nice. We can also use both distortions in series. For this, we just unplug the output from the first triode and we unplug the input from the second triode. Now we can send the output of one to the input of two using this potentiometer. Look at the signal coming into triode one and now triode two. And let's distort it a little bit.
That's a cool sound, right? That is simply the triode self-oscillating. And you can use this as a sound source. The final thing I want to demonstrate is how feedback works with this unit. We've got feedback 1, which is the extent to which the first channel feeds back on itself. Feedback 2, same thing for channel 2. Then we can send the output of channel 1 to the input of channel 2. And we can send the output of channel 2 back to the input of channel 1, creating a big feedback loop. <laughs> There we got the combination of feedback and saturation and actually the signal is very close to collapsing. So if we increase the bias on triode 2 even a little bit more, it just starts sounding like a broken chip. That covers basic operation of the Newton. Let's review it. Since Alex asked us for a fair and honest review, we're going to swear to speak the truth on this book of Nietzsche. I swear that this is my fair and unbiased review. I swear that this is my fair and unbiased review. What do you think of the Crave category? Do we want it? So much, okay. Considering that we use this module almost every time we make a patch, I think the Crave category, it's 10 out of 10. Yeah, we basically use it to mostly add overtones and make the sound more interesting or kind of break it down or get into this weird self-oscillation territory. Very nice. Okay, how about face? How good does it look? How does it uh, compare to the other modules on our rack? I can't get over it. It looks really good. Even the circuit board looks nice. Come on, it's like a little city. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really nicely designed. Yeah. I'm really into it. I love the, especially the front panel and the fact that we get to see these little tubes. It's, it's everything. Yeah. Another it's, 10. What about the groove category? Like how easy is it to make music with it? I think it begs you to make music with it, but um, it's, I'm still, a little, for myself, figuring out a little bit how I want to use it and what kind of aesthetic I want to craft. So for me, it's a 8.5. I think we haven't given you the full overview of how versatile the sound of this module is. It's because I keep wanting to get back to that kind of EBM sound, really distorted bass lines. But it can do a lot more. Um, I think it's easy to make grooves with it. I think it's very compelling because Anything you put through it just ends up sounding good. So I think it's quite groovy. Finally, we have the noob category, which is how easy it is to build. Okay, what do you think? Since this is the first module we built, we can vouch for its noob friendliness. There are two things that I want to point out. The first is the two PCBs are connected by a spacer. Now, both of the kits that we built included a female to female spacer, but instead of two screws, the kits included a screw and a nut. We solved this problem just by adding a rack screw on the other side of the spacer. Just don't use any knurlies because they won't fit under the faceplate. The second thing that we want to mention is that we found it a little difficult to work with a hot glue gun because the glue dries very quickly. We found that it was easier to actually use an old soldering iron tip to melt the glue. This is also a good solution if you don't have a hot glue gun just lying around. You don't have to buy one, just get the glue sticks and an old soldering iron tip melt the glue and place the new tube. So this concludes our build and review of the new tone. We'd like to thank Alex for his support in this venture. If you'd like more sonic examples, please check out our patching the new tone video with Oscilloscope. As this channel is new, we would really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe because it would help us out a lot. Um, thank you so much and see you next time. Cheers.